Good morning, friends. It's day 91 of Russia's invasion into Ukraine, and you are here. You're praying, you're caring, and you're helping to raise up prayer. As always, when you share, when you like, when you comment, it is making a difference. So don't sell yourself short. And if you consider making it, when you share it, making it public, especially if you have a private page, by just clicking those three dots, that would be super helpful. Ah, but we have some great news today because there are some very difficult things we've got to talk about today. But before we get started, we've got to celebrate some amazing breakthroughs. Guys, you guys remember when uh, Russia uh, skated around the default on May 4th, we said at that time, we said there's a loophole that America has the ability to close on May 25th if they're willing and if they close that loophole, then on the 27th, Russia will be unable to make their payments and a default process will begin, which will be completed on June uh, 22nd, 23rd, I believe. They will be go into default. And that is huge. And I'll explain it in a second. First of all, we have to say is America has done it. They have closed the hole. They've closed the gap and they've made it un, uh, they've, if, as far as we can tell, they have made it airtight that Russia cannot pay their debts. And why is this important? Russia has not defaulted since 1917 when the communists took over and refused to pay any of the czar's debts. <clears throat> this is what's ha what will happen with a default. When a default happens, uh, they have the, so when they fail to pay their debts, they have a 30 day window to work, to ne make negotiations, to find other ways to pay. When they fail to do that, what happens is suddenly, first of all, their credit rating drops out and everybody starts to call in all their debts, which they can't pay. And then what, what they do is they immediately, all the creditors start running to the banks uh, running to the courts to get them to seize Russian assets in lieu of payment. Uh, why is this a big deal? Russia owes $60 billion as a government, but bigger than that, Russia's companies owe $400 billion. So almost half a trillion dollars in assets that, that the rest of the world is going to attempt to gain, to, to take, and again, all of the rich people, all of the people, all of their stuff, all those oligarchs, all that stuff goes away. And when it goes away, it goes away for good. And this is when it gets real. So what I'm saying is the, the minute, the next 30 days, the screws are going to be tightening so hardcore on, from the, on businesses and on the, the wealthy, on all people. And so this is essential. Pray that they will, in, instead, uh, they will recognize that the ship is going down and begin to move accordingly. We've been praying for the, the snake to, to devour itself, that then turn upon each other. That is going to happen. It already is happening in many ways. We have reports um, from people uh, well within the government who are talking about they are already floating different candidates to take over for Putin, whether Medvedev, uh, whether uh, various. And, and so that's where our key prayer for a Daniel to arise in Russian government is so key. The, that a man of righteousness would rise up and with wisdom and, and uh, administration to be able to navigate this. Because I can't say it enough. It, it, we don't want Russia, the country, to go down. We don't want the Russian people to suffer. What we want is for injustice to cease. We What we want to see is that domination, control, and oppression, and terror to cease. And for that to happen, there has to be national-level repentance but but um but if Russia as a country goes down, just like when a huge ship goes down, it's going to suck in the world economy. It's going to suck in Ukraine. It's going to suck in so many things. Even if Ukraine comes out intact, it's not a good thing. So we sometimes we can become enraged and just go, rah, I just want destruction. No, no, destruction. There We have an enemy who's come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. So we're praying even for the blessing on Russia and and so in Belarus in these days and so pray for that Daniel to arise in the middle of Russia this is so key right now somebody who has the genius to navigate 
um, the, the absolute bureaucratic nightmare that is Russia and bring, uh, bring good governance and bring righteousness into the government. Um, so pray for Daniel. Um, uh, so, and again, let's, um, a second thing is, um, pray for a Joseph. We're in the middle of a, a, a massive, uh, one last thing with that is they already are recommend saying that now Russia is going to face a 30% decline in their economy. That's huge. So, so it's going to take genius. It's going to take God, divine genius to navigate this. But another thing to pray for is a Joseph to arise. We're talking about this whole food crisis. We've been praying because India and China and uh, the UAE have tried to push forward a narrative. Many of the unaligned countries like South Africa have been pushing a narrative that is like, nobody's at fault here, but we've got a crisis and we got to solve it. And if we have to throw Ukraine under the bus to get wheat out, let's do it. Literally. <laughs> And, uh, and even a, a piece in the New York Times a couple days ago. And so what's beautiful, though, is they are now, it's, we pray that the narrative would get corrected, that the narrative would be, no, Russia did this. This is, this is somebody's fault, and therefore Russia has to stop. It's Russia is at fault. And so instead of, because Russia's saying, hey, I'll, uh, you know, I'll let weed out if you drop some sanctions, right? And no. No, and so they people are talking that way. But the great thing is, um, they are, uh, you know. So, for instance, uh, several voices within the UN's food program are declaring, "No, this is Russia's fault." So this is good. So pray for a Joseph to arise, to have genius, understanding, divine understanding, and administration to rapidly mobilize Ukraine's wheat to the poorest of the poor, that there would be a massive move of how to address this food crisis in the same way that Joseph had in Egypt's time. So pray for a Joseph to arise. Also, a pray in Russia for a Ahithophel. <laughs> if you guys remember, David, as uh, a trusted advisor, went to Absalom and gave him bad advice. And uh, that's what we're praying for, is some really bad advisors for Putin to arise and to continue. And he's getting bad advice. So I think our prayers are being answered there. So, wow. Um, another thing is we have another general gone. I, I, this one defies understanding. The Ukrainians shot down a Sukhoi 25 yesterday, I believe, and, or the day before. And in it was a uh, retired Russian Air Force General, Major General Kanamat Batashov. What, what is a general doing in a fighter jet? Um, some said that he couldn't resist coming back to fly. But to me, that also speaks to the fact that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. This guy was 63 years old. Um, they are, they have run out of veterans. They've run out of veteran leadership and they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. They've just passed a law in the Duma, allowing them to recruit men up to age 60. The life expectancy in Russian for men is 55. This is insane. This is insane. So guys, they are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Um, one of the things that it was just looking at the losses so far, let me just run through this. This is, this is insane. 29,450 Russian soldiers are dead. 80... 8,000 are, are wounded, another 1,000 are prisoners, for a total of 118,800 soldiers. That's 62.5% of the original 190,000 soldiers that Russia fielded. This is, are gone. This is insane, this is insane. 3,200 uh, armored personnel carriers, 1,300 tanks, which is 40% of the tanks they brought. I'm sorry, it's sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's actually more than the 2,900 they brought and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, 40% of those. They br more armored personnel carriers have been destroyed than they brought. I mean, tanks, artillery pieces. As always, I've got all that info and all the information in uh, these at arisealife.org slash Ukraine. But it just, it defies understanding. Nobody, again and again, the military experts are saying they've never seen anything like this in modern warfare. There's no anal uh, analog to this. It's just, it's unbelievable. One of the interesting things is, if you guys remember, Putin's buddies, uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil, um, uh, Modi in India, and uh, or, or, uh, Orban in uh, Hungary, but also Duarte, 
uh, in the Philippines. Well, the interesting thing is, of all those guys, strong men, Duarte has uh, has actually turned on Putin. He's declared that this is an invasion. This is wrong. This is, and and I think part of that is because he's afraid China will use that on him. So this is awesome, though, because the world is beginning to turn on Putin. Even his friends are turning against him. Um, another thing is uh, there was a second uh, a. Um, meeting of the defense secretaries at Rammstein base in Germany. And uh, at this time, there were 47 countries involved trying to figure out how to send support. Um, one of the things, New, uh, New Zealand has sent artillery pieces and a special crews to train uh, Ukrainians in the use of these 105 millimeter super light artillery pieces, of super modern. But here's the interesting thing. New Zealand on the other side of the world has sent this, but what about Germany? Germany still hasn't delivered on anything that they've promised. No weaponry they promised. They continue to hold off. They continue, you know, they're saying maybe they'll consider sending an Iris uh, uh, anti-aircraft uh, system in November. Uh, may, the Leopards that they promised, maybe those will be in July. Germany keeps talking to talk, but failing to come through. And there's literally no, and so pray that the pressure, they, uh, every, it feels like uh, again and again that because the German government right now is so so in the pockets of Russian business because they they literally that was their plan was they they were going to use business as a way to affect Russia. Well, they really what it is is they've all gotten wealthy. All these politicians. So pray all this continues to come out and that they the the uh, the German people because the German people overwhelming seventy eight percent I think support Ukraine. They want support of, uh, of sending weapons to Ukraine and so pray that this this fundamental lack of support would be revealed. Um, but again and again, the U.S. and the and the U.K. have been coming through big time. So uh, praise God for that. And the final thing is Lithuania has also come through with a big shipment with uh, 20 armored vehicles and military trucks. And uh, so it's awesome. So praise God. There are so many good things happening. But you guys know we now need to direct it where it needs to go. And Don Boss is on fire. The amount of artillery that Russia has been using, I mentioned this before, they have 20 times the amount of military hardware in the area that the Ukrainians have. And they are doing their best to cut off the roads and the um, and uh, the railways into the region to keep it that way. And they are throwing everything they have and the kitchen sink. They are pushing hard and they're making some uh, significant movement. If you guys remember, in the east, the far east, the middle of the eastern front is Papasna, where Russia has been pushing forward since uh, since April 14th, making very little progress. They finally broke through, and now they're pushing uh, and an arc to the northwest to attempt a much larger encirclement of of of. Um, uh, Luchansk and Severna Donetsk. They, they continue, they can't do it right at Severna Donetsk, so they're trying a bigger encirclement, uh, and they, they've continued to be stopped in Izum, but they're making progress from Papasna. And so pray, 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 because I can't say this enough. There's 15,000 people in Severna Donetsk still. It was a city of 100,000. They, 15,000 are there, and the governor of Lugansk has said, there's no way to get them out now. They, they've, re those people resisted evacuating and now they're stuck because Sevna Danyets and Luchans is blocked in on three sides and they're bombing and the Russians are bombing the highway, uh, uh nonstop. And so pray for them, pray for the people who, who, cause even though they say nobody can get out, I promise you people are trying to get out, pray for those people that they would be, stay safe, pray for the, the believers, pray for those who are going in and getting people out, pray, 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 because the amount of, of, of bombing up to this point, um, Russians have stopped doing airstrikes so much because their, their planes are getting shot down. Now they're going all in, in the last 24 hours, uh, there were 45 airstrikes, I'm sorry, 25 airstrikes. Uh, and just they bombed everything. I, I've got a list here, and they, you know, and so much of it, they're attacking civilian targets, um, and it, and it, and it's horrible. But 
that so pray for that whole area. Pray that they would get the supplies in. Pray they would the railway and the uh, the roads would hold. But pray for people to be evacuated successfully. But also pray, uh, pray for supernatural protection. But pray for divine wisdom and understanding for the Ukrainian troops as they try to hold ground. That they would stay protected from artillery attacks and be able to fight back effectively. Also pray though in Kharkov that they would be able to break through and cut off the supply lines. Um, to Izum and the northwest uh, portion of the front. Um, and so pray, continue to pray there. Pray though also on the Zaporozhsky front over on Zaporozhsky is the city to the south of Dnipra and very close. And the front there is about 30 miles from the city. And they shot Zaporozhsky, they shot four cruise missiles at the city yesterday uh, or this morning even. And they, um, one of those was intercepted, but I mean, they took out a shopping mall. It's obvious that they're trying to soften up Saporozhia because they are massing troops massively uh, just south of Zaporozhia and they're wanting to do a push there. So pray, pray, pray for Zaporozhia. And, um, but also um, just continue to pray um, all across the board. Final thing to pray is Snake Island. You guys remember Snake Island? Uh, well, um, there is evidence that Russia has managed to put up something on there. Uh, a Togolese uh, ship was passing yesterday and was hailed by the Russians basically saying, get out or we'll kill you. So pray that the Russia, the Ukrainians can once again clean off Snake Island because as long as, as Russia has there, they have the ability, uh, somebody put it this way, it's, um, it's a 42-acre unsinkable aircraft carrier uh, or, a, or, or a missile site because they can, they can shoot anything, uh, they can control that area, and it would block any uh, convoys that they're proposing to get wheat out of Odessa. So pray for the wheat to get out of Odessa, but pr for that, pray that they can clean off Snake Island again. Wow, a lot's going on, but please, please, please <laughs> know that your prayers are making a difference. Again, the whole thing, long laundry list of things that God has done in the last 24 hours that are the exact results of the things you and I have been praying for. Continue to pray, but guys, don't be overwhelmed. Don't try to pray for it all. You ask God to show you what he's called you to pray for. And as you hear that, as you get that 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 assignment, you know, think of it as a soldier. A soldier receives, you know, you know, where, what's the, my part of the front? Where am I going to go? What am I supposed to do? What you ask God, what is the things, the one, two or three things that he's calling you specifically to pray for? And then the second thing is you don't just tell us a soldier, go there. You give him a strategy. You tell him what you want to see accomplished. Same thing. God, what do you want to accomplish specifically? Ask him for prayer strategies. It could be blind the enemy. It could be, it could be any number of things. Ask God for those prayer, prayer strategies. And as you get those, why don't you, could you consider writing them down and sharing them with all of us? So that, and as you see prayer strategies that line up with what you're praying, jump on board and begin to pray that. Share, yes, yes, let's pray for that. Let's pray for that together. Um, I'm with you. I'm standing with you, right? Because this is the thing. Fatigue is our number one enemy right now in this prayer war. One, because we're on our 91st day. Two, because it's, you're not physically there. Three, though, is because as, as we fight fatigue with detail, knowing, you know, and responses like, get what this is why you jump on every day so that we can talk through the ways that your prayers are effective, right? That's that fights encouragement of seeing what God's doing fights fatigue, but also um, when our prayers are really general, it's hard to get that, that encouragement. So we are fighting fatigue by being specific, focused, and uh, consistent, and then checking the results. So um, this also, yes, come on, uh, Miriam's saying, praying for the children to be protected from traffickers. So one of the things I love is you guys, so many of our prayer requests, we don't have time to get to, they're still in here, um, but, um, and some of them, you've been praying this same things since the beginning of the war. We don't have time to talk about them, but that's your part of the wall, right? So continue. I love that you guys continue to bring those up. Guys, we're so grateful that we can stand together with you. Um, and we're so grateful that we can stand with our, our friends, Vladimir and Lily and the church in Nipra. 
they are um, particularly pray. I, I really believe that there's some very key things they're going to be doing in the next few days, um, specifically as Russia's uh, building on this offensive. Um, they're, they are going directly to the front lines. Uh, even today, they were delivering supplies to soldiers. Um, sometimes they're, they're literally like, like getting a generator to them, getting food, getting, getting a needed medical supplies to medics. They're doing all these things. They're going to right up into the line of battle. And, um, and so please pray for them. Please pray for them. Uh, and, and also, uh, you know, um, consider giving. Um, we're going to be sending over monies today. I'm waiting for the word from the accountant. We have a few thousand dollars I know that have been given. And so we're going to be trying to get those. We're going to be setting up a wire transfer today at noon. So please consider uh, giving um, if uh, um, and we will send it right through. Again, for all the information on them and what they're doing and how to give, you can go to ariselife.org slash help Ukraine. And again, for all of these, you can go to ariselife.org slash Ukraine. And so um, we're just grateful for each of you. Let me just finally just pray for you. God, I just ask right now that you would touch every heart right now, that they would be encouraged, that you are on the move, not just in Ukraine, but in their lives. Lord, I ask that you would give us eyes to see how you're moving in our lives, that we would be encouraged so that then we would turn to partner with you for the breakthroughs you're bringing in our lives, whether physical, emotional, financial. Lord, I ask you to fill us with hope, fill us with courage, fill us with joy. And Lord, give us brothers and sisters that we can lock arms with, even from a distance, to stand for the breakthroughs in our own lives so that we can, with power, fight on, uh, with, with you for what you want to see done in Ukraine. Lord, we love you. We praise you. You are good. In your name, amen. Guys, we love you guys so much. We're so grateful for all of you all. Again, when you share, when you like, when you comment, it makes a difference. When you comment on other people's comments, when you, when you, when you pray for one another, it makes a difference. So if you need prayer, just say need prayer and, I, and, and then jump on and love on each other. Pray for each other. Also, you know, jump. Um, if you want to be part of one of the men's or women's groups um, that are meeting on Zoom, go uh, just say men's group or women's group, and our uh, our folks will get with you and provide you those details. Um, but love you guys so much. So grateful for you all. Have an incredible day.